Hi, I'm Phil Hill, and welcome back to eLiterate TV. Today, we're with Mark Warshauer from the University of California at Irvine, and welcome. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you for inviting me. So being a grantee from uh, the MOOC Research Initiative, um, tell me a little bit about the project that you're working on. Well, we're very interested in what you might call the STEM gateway or the STEM pipeline, mm -hmm. how we get uh, kids who are interested in science to be successful in science in university and to graduate in that area and get into scientific fields. And as you know, there's a big drop off on that pipeline every yeah. step of the way. So our colleagues at University of California, Irvine created a MOOC called Preparation for Introductory Biology which is geared to help incoming freshmen prepare for uh, their introductory biology class. That's a key gateway course that yeah. really helps determine whether people can stay in the major, get in the major, etc. Mm -hmm. So while this MOOC was open to anybody who wanted to take it throughout the world, there was targeted enrollment of students who wanted to be biology majors at UCI and wanted to succeed in that course. So that's interesting. So with this pipeline, would this typically be students in their uh, summer before the freshman year, or would it even be later within their academic career? Exactly. It was, it was targeted at students in the summer before their freshman year. And because they hadn't arrived at campus yet, really the only way to reach them was through an online mechanism. Particularly given that you're doing this as a MOOC where it's open, what are you actually hoping to learn from this research work in analyzing the data? Two big questions. One is whether uh, this type of MOOC can be effective in helping students su succeed in, in, bio in the biology course and the biology major. Mm -hmm. So we'll do various kinds of comparisons between people who had the opportunity to take the MOOC, did or did not take it, uh, etc. Mm -hmm. And in particular, one of the things we're looking at is the role of peer assessment activities within the MOOC and how they contribute to student success as well. So those are the, the two elements we're looking at. So you'll actually compare the people who took the MOOC and how they did in the Intro to Biology course versus so somewhat of a longitudinal yeah. study. There. Yeah, and it's it's one of the th couple things that are interesting about it. You know, typically MOOCs are kind of a black box. You don't know that much about who the students who take them are. But for the 500 UCI students who took this course, we have complete institutional data. We have their SAT scores, their high school GPA, their ethnicity, their poverty level, their language status. Mm -hmm. And then when they get to UCI, we'll have their course grades, their persistence in major, et cetera. So we'll be able to do you know, pretty precise analysis of how taking or not taking this MOOC contributed to their success in introductory biology and to their success in a biology major. Well, more broadly speaking, not just from your project, but in general, what more will we know about MOOCs, say, a year from now than what we actually know today? Well, a year's a, a short time in, in research life, although I guess it's a lifetime in <laughs> the technology world. But I would say uh, one low-hanging fruit has to do with persistence. Mm -hmm. Who persists in MOOCs? What kinds of environments help them persist? What kinds of interaction contribute to greater persistence? I think we'll know a lot more about that a year from now than we know right now. Great. Well, um, it's been a fascinating conversation. I want to thank Mark Warshower for uh, joining us, and thank you. Thanks for having me.